Hello and welcome everybody to ALC at Home. This is our online service here at Abundant Life Church and it's great that you can join us. We're excited to be here today. Yes. My name's Lewis. And my name's Hannah. And it's so cool to be part of the team here and to bring these services to you Sunday after Sunday. Um, yeah, we hope you've been enjoying them just as much as we've been enjoying being part of it too. Yeah, absolutely. And welcome to anybody who is watching maybe for the first time and yeah. all those even from Abundant Life Church who may be at home with COVID or different things like that or yeah. flu that's going around. We just encourage and hope that you have a gain something from today. And we just are glad you can join us. And we are praying for you, for all those who are ill. We do know we're here for you as well. Yes, um, we were so blessed last Sunday to hear from Pastor Hamish, um, who's out helping it with Santi Church in Thailand. It's so cool to you know, hear about the team there, get to know them a little bit more, yeah. um, hear their vision and how we as a church can help build that vision and help get behind them as well. Um, so I highly encourage you that if you did miss la uh, last Sunday to go back and check that out because um, it was such a blessing to us here in New Zealand. So I'm sure that those of you have, have, who haven't watched it will also be blessed by it as well. But we have some cool things coming up, mm. don't we, Lewis? Yeah, absolutely. And I just yeah. want to say I agree with them. A lot of people I talked to was like, a great insight yeah. to see what's happening. And yeah. I had a few people go, I'm ready for a mission to probably yeah. to see, go and see what's happening because it's so excited to be a part of this. Yeah. And, you know, this is what it's about, Missions Month. And we're taking this month to really focus it on mission for a lot of different reasons. And mission is more than just overseas. It's here, right here in Wellington. What can we do to focus in on? and just to have a focus on mission. And I, I encourage you, firstly, with One Day Mission. Um, yeah. If you don't know what that is, is we, we give this challenge for all, every person to give one day's pay towards mission. We collect it all and we, we give it to the people we're working in in Thailand and, and, and in other places as well. So we encourage you just to focus in on that. And if you want to know more, you can email us at info.alc.org.nz and we can connect you with that. And also, I want to encourage you that as we continue in this this week we're going to keep going in the story of mission. We have yeah. um, we have Chris Smith with us today, and he's going to talk. He's from the Billy Billy Graham Foundation. And he's going to help focus us on 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 mission and um, with discipleship and reaching others. So let's get ready and get excited for that. And I do want to say quickly is next week we have um, the readings coming, and it's going to be a great encouraging message for all of us. Um, and we, even on the Saturday, if you're here in Wellington, I encourage you to join us from 9 to 1. We're going to come together for a one, we call it like a one-day conference, a one-morning conference to grow together, to be challenged, and focus in on this idea of living in mission, living as people with mission. Mm -hmm. So I encourage you to join us, and there'll be a Turkish brunch afterwards. If you want to know more, email us again, and we'll be able to help you with that. Yes, that's so exciting. I'm definitely looking it's going to be so cool to have the readings back with us. We've gone, um, you know, the past couple of years from hearing Josh online through video sermons, which has been great, but it's going to be so good to have the whole family here with us. So like Lewis said, I highly encourage you to sign up for that if you're here in Wellington, New Zealand, so you can be part of that. But also, if you've been joining us, you know, every Sunday for Mission Sunday on Missions Month, and you have some questions on maybe how you can help Santi Church or how you can help the Reading family or even just um, the different sermons that you've heard over this month, how you can be part um, of the mission field, or maybe you have any other questions to do with faith. But um, we have a lovely platform called Slido, and I think it's so, so cool that we get to you know, have this platform um, of those you know, in the faith where we can come together and ask these kinds of questions. You can ask um, anonymously or you know, with your identity, and Pastor Image does an amazing job at um, answering those questions. So if you do have any questions on your heart um, to do with faith, missions, life, or the sermon that you're, you're about to hear, then we really encourage you to ask them at www.slider.com and use the hashtag ALC22. Um, if you want to get a feel for what they're like, then you can uh, look back at our YouTube channel of um, the different Slido videos that we have. Pastor Hamish answers every question individually and they're all up on our YouTube channel. So why don't you watch one of them, get a feel for what it may be like, and then go ahead um, to Slido and ask those questions because um, what better way to do life together than coming together and figure out, figuring out um, the answers to these questions. Yeah, absolutely. And I, just before we get into that, I just want to encourage you, um, you know, for all of us, there's a great question I love to ask is how can I respond to God today? How can I respond to all that He has done for me? And I think the great, great encouragement is wherever you are, let's give to him generously. And it's not just 
it's not just finances in every way. So I encourage you as you go into this week, let's give hope to people. As you go into the day ahead, give hope, give life to everyone you come across. And also I encourage you to give to finances. If you're here in New Zealand, I encourage you to give to ALC. You can give to the account number here. And if you are overseas, I encourage you, find an organisation that's making a difference in your community, making a difference and showing God's hope and love. I encourage you to give to them, help build them up so they can continue what they're doing. We just encourage you to do that in this time. Yes. Uh, well, we are going to go into a bit of our prayer. We're going to come together. We don't want this to just be Lewis and I praying. Um, we want you to join with us, so we really encourage you that if you're watching from your homes, wherever you're watching from, to bow your head and pray with us, whether it's in your hearts or out loud, however you do it. But um, we just would love for you to come together, join with us as we pray for um, you know our faith, people close to us who need to know Jesus, as we pray for our nation and um, just other things that are going on. We just ask that you join us, um, and we hope that you're blessed by this as well. So let's pray together. Mm. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you for yet another opportunity to come together and um, pray. We thank you for technology. We thank you that it's uh, uniting us together to come together and to praise your name. So Lord, we just thank you for who you are. We thank you that we can so freely come into your presence uh, without a worry, without a doubt. We know that you're here with us. So we thank you for that. Um, and we thank you that, you know, with everything going on, with the chaos of the world, with um, changes that are happening, with new uh, things that are being brought in place, with whatever's going on, we know that you aren't, you you don't change. Your love for us doesn't change at all. We know that you are our anchor, and that um, you know you are our safe place, our cornerstone. And we thank mm. you for that. Um, we thank you that your goodness and your mercy always follows us. Um, and we know that you know our, the God we serve is a mighty, mighty God, and we thank you for that. Lord, today I just specifically come to you for. Uh, New Zealand, our home, Lord. Father, this is a nation, um, you know, that starts off its national anthem by asking God to defend um, this nation. So, Lord, we just ask that you continue to defend this land, Lord, that, Lord, you will you will be at this end of it, Lord Jesus, that uh, the, the, the many sons and daughters that you have on this on, in this country will stand for you, that we will stand for the truth, that we will fight the good fight for however long we need to, Lord, that, Lord, we will seek out every opportunity to glorify your name on this nation, Lord. Father, I just pray to give us the hearts to go out, Lord Jesus, to step out of our comfort zones, to go out and make your name known to those that need it the most, Lord. Help us to be um, the light in the darkness, to spread hope to those that need it, Lord Jesus. Father, we pray um, for the government, for the leaders of this nation. We pray, we pray that your mercy and your goodness also follows them. Uh, Lord, we pray, we pray for people of faith in that place. We pray that they will speak with boldness when they are to speak, that, Lord, they will represent you in, the, in, in that place, Lord Jesus, that, you know, they may be the only uh, representations of you that other leaders see. So, Lord, we pray that they put on their armor of God and that they represent you the best way possible um, and that they use their influence the right way. So we just ask that, Lord, in this nation, you will have your way, Jesus. Father, we just thank you that you're a good and gracious God, God, that you are a God that loves, that cares, that there is a redeemer, a restorer. And we just pray for every single person watching right now. God, I just pray your presence upon them. God, I just pray you help them in every single situation. Fill them with your presence. I just pray as these mountains ahead, these battles in front of them, God, may you give them the strength to overcome. May you give them the strength to go through whatever they have to go through. And Father, I just pray people around them. I just pray... Uh, you, you put people around them in every situation, mm. but your people, that they'll be built up and strengthened in you. And Father, we just pray for anyone who's tackling sickness and yes, um, illness and COVID right now. God, I just pray your healing hand upon them. May you just be in the situation with them, strengthen them, uh, give them rest, and just help them to grow through this as well. Father, we just thank you that you are here with us and for us. God, I just pray you continue to help us to grow in you, to learn from you, to follow you. And Father, I just thank you for every single person. May you bless them and strengthen them, we pray. Yes. pray. But we just thank you right now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, we're going to get into the message today. We're really excited about it. And uh, we hope you're encouraged and strengthened as well. I'm going to hand it over now. Thank you. Thank you. It's lovely to be back. 
it's always good to go and to strengthen and encourage uh, the church in, in Thailand, our sister church there, but it's always good to come back and to be able to worship, with you, even if it's a little cold. And I know I've come back to uh, what seems to be a, another little outbreak of COVID. I know many people in, um, here at ALC are away uh, at the moment with COVID and uh, certainly we should be praying for one another, encouraging one another. This thing too shall pass in this form and it will come back in another form and on it goes. But uh, it's good to be back here, it's good to worship. And uh, I do bring you greetings from, from Santi uh, and Samok and for uh, another church that we're now working with, Blessed Church. Um, they are very great grateful for uh, the, the support and the encouragement of the ALC. Hey, um, just before we, we get in, go any further, just as we were worshipping, I, I just had the sense, um, Ron, that as we were worshipping that there's songs that have been not, there are, there are unwritten songs in the heart. There are songs that reflect the ups and downs of life. And I just believe that, that God has um, got, got his church universal in a season where he is releasing songs and, and worship leaders that reflect each local congregation, so to speak, that, that in a sense reflect the voice of, of a congregation. And, and, and the days of, of relying on, on, on songs from a few churches, um, we're always going to celebrate, we're always going to use them, but, but the days of always looking to others is, is coming to an end. I, I really believe that, that the church universal God is raising up a generation of, of people who have got songs in the heart that reflect his voice for a particular group of people. And, and I just want to encourage you because I have a sense there are unwritten songs in the heart. Uh, I know you're very talented and, and maybe it's a time issue. Maybe I just want to say, write them because... <laughs> The Church of Jesus Christ need, needs them. We need them. The Kingdom of Heaven needs them because they are our voice in, in this generation. So um, I just want to encourage you with that. Well, it's good to be able to gather together in this season of Missions Month. It's uh, I've been excited. I hope last week that uh, you saw a little bit of what's happening over in Thailand uh, through the support of people like yourselves and, and what is possible. It's certainly been really, really uh, encouraging from my point of view to have uh, people uh, respond and emails while I was away, text saying uh, how much it meant to them and uh, they, they want to get behind it. So those of you who are joining us from home, uh, a really warm welcome and, and again, Know that you're in my prayers. I know that some of you can't be here because you've uh, got COVID in the house. Um, I can't begin to imagine what you must be going through. For those of you with young families, holidays and COVID, what a combination. I mean, either one of those is enough. But uh, welcome and, and know that even though you're not physically here, we, we celebrate together as a church wherever we find ourselves. But uh, as we move through Missions Month, of course, next week we culminate Missions Month with uh, the, the readings here from Turkey. Uh, I really encourage you, as Lewis said, next Saturday there is that missional living a half day. We've got a Turkish brunch following it. Uh, it's really worthwhile coming and, and being part of that. But today I'm really excited to be able to welcome um, someone who is, uh, who I think is, um, is really significant. For the first time I, I met I met Chris, um, there was a, a gentleness of heart but a strength of faith that was really refreshing. Um, you know, so often we meet people who have a strong faith and uh, but there's no gentleness of heart there, there, and, and yet there's no meekness which is strength and, 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 and they've come together in a really powerful way and I'm, I'm, I'm greatly honoured to have met you. He's also my boss at part time as well um, because Chris actually uh, is here as part of the Billy Graham Evangelist um, Organization. There is the crusade that's happening, the event that's happening in November, which some of you are aware of, that we're starting to build up, and I'm um, giving a day a week to help bring churches on board and to, to get that rolling, because it's a chance for the Church of Wellington to really help bring God's kingdom to bear by, by preparing ourselves to be the church, to bring people into, uh, not into an event to, to be evangelized but to bring them to an event where all of the work that people like you and I have been speaking into people's lives find uh, its fulfillment in a response to the gospel uh, with, with Franklin Graham here, Billy Sun uh, in November. And so I just thought it was really appropriate to invite um, uh, Chris to come and to, as part of Missions Month to speak because the focus really, and what this is why I love what's happening is it's, it's not mass evangelism, it's individual evangelism in a mass context. 
In other words, it's us evangelizing people together and God comes together in a big event. So uh, you're going to hear about a focus of it which really, really um, uh, just excites me. So without any further ado, uh, I'm just going to ask you to welcome uh, Chris Smith to, to, to speak to us this morning. There it is. Well, good morning. I wouldn't say I'm significant, <laughs> but thank you for those kind words. Um, likewise, uh, I was just going to say pretty much the same thing. Uh, I love your pastor. Uh, he's got such a heart for the Lord that's contagious. And, uh, you know, the Bible says that we're God's epistles, known and read by everyone. And, um, you know, before we even talk about sharing Christ and uh, talk about evangelism or being a spiritual rescue, um, Really, we can't separate our lives from our witness. You know, you can, but it's not really effective. Our life has to, to back it up. So we have to be walking with God, setting apart Christ as Lord before we can start to share Him with others. And so that's what we're aiming to do here, um, November 16, uh, TSB Arena. Uh, we're going to put on an event, a concert. Uh, I think we have a few bands here that's listed, Newsboys and the Afters. Uh, if you don't know them, you can Google them. Uh, I'm sure they'll pop up. But anyone heard of these boys? Yeah, yeah a few of you. Okay. Uh, so they'll be here. They put on a tremendous concert. But uh, we don't just come in and, and blow in, blow up, and blow out or set up an event. Uh, but we're here months in advance. And that's why we're here so early uh, so that we can start building relationships. You know, life is all about relationships. Our relationship with God, first and foremost, relationships take time, surrender, absolute commitment to that other person. And so that's true with us with God as we read his word uh, and hear his word, but also in our relationship with others um, out and about. And so that's really what I wanted to uh, talk to you about today is about being effective in our witness, but really making ourselves available. You know, someone said that God's gift to us is uh, the ability and our gift to him is availability. And so are we making ourselves Available, you know, God is calling us to dive in and uh, and go deeper. And so, um, we actually just finished up. One, I should say, one of uh, the key verses that that's our kind of go to is First Peter three fifteen. Uh, you all know it, but in your heart set apart Christ as Lord. Uh, always be prepared to give an answer to the uh, for everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. And so really we have to focus on that first part first, setting apart Christ as Lord, uh, and then we can get into always be prepared to have an answer. How do you share Christ? And so uh, we actually just finished up, I finished up an event like this uh, in Liverpool. We were there for probably three or four years given the, the pandemic and everything else. So uh, it took a long time. Uh, so we did a tour through the United Kingdom. We went to uh, Liverpool, Sheffield, Cardiff, and Wells, and we just finished up in London at the Excel Center there in London. So uh, my city was Liverpool, and uh, anybody ever been to Liverpool? <laughs> Liverpool's known for what? Soccer. Football. Yeah, football. Well, I, I was thinking something else. What else? Beatles. Beatles, yes. Is there anything else? That's it, huh? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, football and Beatles, those are like... Well, at least football is like a religion over there, really. Um, but another thing that you might not know is the, uh, if you've ever heard of the White Star Lines, which was where the, the boat, the Titanic, was registered. Uh, so I don't think the Titanic ever uh, got to come to shore in Liverpool. Uh, it was out of, I think, built in Belfast or something like that. Um, it set sail from Southampton, England. But they do have a tremendous museum there. If you ever get over that way, uh, to Liverpool, and um, it's worth taking a look. And so, um, you know, the Titanic was one of the, the greatest ships of its day. It weighed over 46,000 tons, coursing at 22 knots on its maiden voyage. It struck an iceberg. You know the story. Um, it only had about half as many lifeboats as it did passengers. And so when the Titanic went under, over 1,500 people Perished. And so as you go through one of these museums, you may go through, they have like water that was the temperature of the, the Atlantic, the North Atlantic that night, you could put your hand in. Um, they have like the uh, replica of the Grand Staircase that you can look at. But then it gets to be a little more personal as you know, you, you see personal items 
um, hair brushes or wedding rings and things like that. And so, actually, they give you a um, if I have it here, they give you a ticket when you go in. They give you a boarding pass without <coughs> the name of an individual that would have been on there. So this was a first class passenger, age 13. And so you, it gives a little information about this person and you take it. And as you get to the end, um, the, the final room, uh, they have a, a board on the wall and it has saved or lost. And it's not talking about are you saved spiritually or lost, but what it's talking about, were you rescued or did you succumb to the, to the waters? Um, that night, and so you would look and see if your person was, was either saved or lost. And so, I just want to show you a quick video, uh, which kind of helps set the stage for this morning, uh, about one of those passengers uh, aboard the Titanic. It was April 15, 1912, the year of our Lord, when the HMS Titanic sank beneath the icy waters of the North Atlantic taking with it 1,517 lives. The largest and most luxurious ship known to man at the time was gone, reminding the world of our frailty as human beings. But there is more to the sinking of the Titanic than a historical tragedy. There is a story of courageous heroism and unshakable faith. John Harper was aboard the Titanic when she set sail from Southampton, England on her maiden voyage. An evangelist, originally from Glasgow, Scotland, he was well known throughout the United Kingdom as a charismatic, passionate speaker who led many to Christ through his gift of preaching. In 1912, Reverend Harper received an invitation to speak at the Moody Church in Chicago, USA. And on April 11, 1912, John Harper boarded the Titanic. The world was captivated with the ship, Widely proclaimed as unsinkable, it was the largest movable object ever built by man at the time. Some of the wealthiest people in the world were aboard. While many of the passengers spoke of business deals, acquisitions, and material desires, John Harper was diligently sharing the love of Christ with others. In the days leading up to the tragedy, survivors reported seeing Harper living like a man of faith, speaking kind words, and sharing the love of Christ. On the evening of April 14th, as passengers danced in the ballroom and tried their luck at the card tables, John Harper put his daughter to bed and read his devotions, as he did every night. At 11.40 p.m., the Titanic struck an iceberg. The unsinkable ship was doomed. Either in disbelief or unaware at the time, passengers continued about their pleasures. It wasn't until the ship's crew sent up a series of distress flares lighting up the moonless night that passengers finally realized the seriousness of their situation. Then chaos ensued. It all happened so fast that John Harper could only react. His response left an historic example of courage and faith. Harper awakened his daughter, picked her up, and wrapped her in a blanket before carrying her up to the deck. There he kissed her goodbye and handed her to a crewman who put her into boat number 11. Harper knew he would never see his daughter again, and his daughter would be left an orphan at six years of age. Harper then gave his life jacket to a fellow passenger, ending any chance of his survival. While the light of other worldly ambitions began to flicker and die, John Harper burned even brighter. As the sounds of terror and mayhem continued, Harper focused on his God-given purpose. Survivors reported seeing him on the upper deck, surrounded by terrified passengers, on his knees, praying for their salvation. At 2.40 a.m., the Titanic disappeared beneath the North Atlantic, leaving a mushroom-like cloud of smoke and steam above her grave, and tragically, over 1,000 people, including Harper, fighting for their lives in the icy water. He managed to find a piece of floating wreckage to hold on to. Quickly, he swam up to every person he could find, urging those about him to put their faith in Jesus Christ. While death forced others to face the folly of their life's pursuits, John Harper's goal of winning men to Jesus Christ became more vital. Soon, John Harper began to succumb to the sea. Even in his last moment, this tireless man of undying faith continued his life pursuit 
of winning lost souls. I am a survivor of the Titanic. I was one of only six people out of 1,517 to be pulled from the icy waters of that dreadful night. Like the hundreds around me, I found myself struggling in the cold, dark waters of the North Atlantic. The wail of the perishing was ringing in my ears when there floated by me a man who called to me, Is your soul saved? I heard him call out to others as he and everyone around me sank beneath the waters to eternity. There alone in the night, with two miles of water under me, I cried to Christ to save me. I am John Harper's last convert. Harper, as he knew then, would not survive. But his example of undying faith and commitment to the Word of God lives as an example for all to see. In the midst of that desperate assemblage of drowning men, women, and children, he pointed them to the cross, and thus, as he lived, died with that one name upon his lips, Jesus Christ. So John Harper that night really saw what the eyes of God did he? Uh, it was said that he helped stop the lifeboats with women, children, the unsaved. And uh, you see, it was not all about perishing that night in the North Atlantic, but it was about eternity. And that's really true for the people uh, around us, those that are around us. And so you think of the Titanic, why did so many perish and so many more could have been rescued? Many of the lifeboats went out half empty. They were meant to hold 70 to 80 people. Some went out with as few as 36, 37. And so only uh, one lifeboat went back and pulled six more from the water. And so maybe there were some assumptions that night. Um, maybe they said if we go back, we'll be overtaken by all the people in the water. Uh, maybe if we go back, we get sucked by the, the suction of the ship. Uh, you know, the rescue ship, the Carpathia, would be there at any moment. But it wasn't. And so that's really where we find ourselves today. If you know Jesus, you're in the lifeboat. You're going to make it. The question is, will we go back? Will we go back? And so we're always, we're, you know, we build bigger and better lifeboat boats, churches, and we, we have lifeboat meetings and things like that. But will we go back? And so instead of talking about evangelism, maybe think of it in terms as, as being a spiritual rescue for Jesus. And so, um, you know, a lot of times people will say, well, you know, I'm just not gifted at evangelism. But if we're just able to be a friend to someone, to start building those relationships. You know, God has placed us where we work, where we live, where we go to school, where we shop, all of these things. And so I like what one lady said to her pastor when her pastor, her pastor said, what is it that you do? And she said, Pastor, uh, I'm a disciple of Jesus Christ, cleverly disguised as a machine operator. Right? You know, not what you do for money, but what is your calling in life? You know, God calls us to be ambassadors. And uh, we had a, an ambassador on our team one time, and we asked him, what, what does it mean, the most simplest form? And he said, uh, to be making friends in a foreign land. And so uh, that's really true uh, for us, as we make friends for Jesus, as we're going along to be making disciples. So a lot of people say evangelism is not my gift, and yeah, there's a gift of evangelism, right? Um, you know, I feel like Billy Graham had that gift. Franklin Graham had that gift, has that gift. Uh, but what if we leave evangelism to those who only have that gift? You know, um, Pastor Hamish may not have the, the gift of mercy, but you know what? Uh, he has to show mercy, right? No, he does. I know he does. But just because we're gifted in, in one area doesn't mean that God calls us not to do it. And so, um, and so what is the most effective means in evangelism? You say, I don't like to go door to door, talk to strangers, or uh, stand on the corner and, and preach and things like that. But if we just keep it simple and start building those relationships. So how many of you came to Christ? Maybe someone came to your home, uh, evangelism explosion or something like that. They knocked on your door, uh, you invited them in, you sat down, they presented the gospel, and you came to Christ. Just show of hands. Anybody? Yeah. Um, how many came to Christ about maybe listening to the gospel on the radio or television? That's had a few of those, yeah. Uh, maybe watching a Billy Graham crusade. Uh, Billy Graham was here back in, what, 1959? The Athletic Park? Anybody? No? Um, how many of you came? By the way, I'm getting a little worried. <laughs> getting a little worried, Pastor. Um, 
How many became Christ? Maybe a friend or relative shared the message with you or took you somewhere to hear the message? Show of hands, yeah. Yeah, so right, look around. So, uh, you know, it, it just makes sense. You've seen their lives, people have seen your lives, their friendships, and how you respond to all of these things. And so, um, as we think about being a spiritual rescue, we want to pray for open doors. Uh, you know, you can pray every day, but pray an open door to share the gospel. Paul says, and pray for us too, that God may open a door for our message so that we may proclaim the mystery of Christ for which I am in chains. So Lord, open a door. Lord, open uh, their heart. Let that person be prepared to receive. And Lord, open my mouth. And so um, we're convinced that, you know, not a lot of unsaved people just wake up and say, you know what? I need to accept Jesus today. But they do wake up with all sorts of problems, you know, broken and disappointing relationships. Uh, there were stars in their eyes only to find out it was sand and dust or whatever. Uh, broken relationships, guilt over wrong things, loneliness, stress, uh, inability to overcome sin and things like that. And so people often think their need may be to restore a troubled marriage but um, or to get rid of that loneliness. But these are real symptoms of a greater problem. And we know that that's, we can introduce them uh, to the symptom, which is uh, for the... Uh, Missing relationship with God. So the symptom to the disease, which is sin, and on to ultimately the cure found only in Christ. And so, um, so today I just want to share a little simple tool with you that we've used um, for the last 60 years or so uh, in evangelism. And it's really a simple tool. It comes from John 1.40. Uh, you know the verse. It's up there on the, some of it's up here. So uh, the first thing that Andrew did was find his brother, Simon, that's Peter, and took him to Jesus. And so that's really what we do. Pastor Hamish mentioned that we don't do mass evangelism. A lot of times people think, oh, we just put up a few billboards, you know, and, and some radio ads and things, and all these people come. Uh, that's not the case. We don't want to have a Christian event. We want as many unsaved people there as possible. And so, and that's how we do this. And that's by working with local churches and uh, having you guys start praying for, being intentional about rescuing individuals in your lives, friends, neighbors, relatives, uh, whoever, and bring them to the event. That's something you can do in your church and invite people into the church on Sunday. Um, there's, there was a study a few years ago that said six out of 10 people will come to church if you invite them, uh, which is pretty good odds, pretty good percentage. And so uh, it just means building those relationships. So that's the concept, it's called I Am Andrew. And um, really back in Billy Graham's day, there weren't a lot of people coming forward early on in the ministry. Maybe 75 to 100 people would come forward. And uh, Billy Graham heard about a church in London uh, that was reaching many for the gospel. And so the team went to check that out. And what was happening was they were once a month were having a bring a friend night. So the music might have been a little bit livelier or whatever. Uh, there'd be a, an evangelistic message, things like that. And all these people were coming into the church and accepting Christ. And so uh, they implemented that within our classes that we teach, which we're going to teach some here in Wellington. Uh, and just out of that, they start seeing four or 500 people come forward the next year in Glasgow, Scotland. And so over the years, it's been multiplied thousands. And so what's going on there? I mean, Billy Graham was anointed, uh, obviously, uh, very anointed. But it's the fact that people have been reached out to and uh, related to in friendship and that they were prayed for and that they were brought to these meetings. And so, um, if you think about Andrew inviting his friends, uh, you, there are a few things you can do is, is look up. One, that's just to pray for that individual, start paying attention and pray for them each and every day. We need to look around. Uh, they say that the average Christian, after being a Christian for two years, doesn't have any significant relationships with those outside of faith. And so it means looking around. Now, I lost my baggage. I hope I'm good on time here. I lost my baggage. Uh, so I got here on Wednesday. And um, so I have not had any clothes <laughs> for the last three or four days. Uh, and so I won't say which airline it is. It's not Air New Zealand. Uh, but hopefully I'll get my bag back. Anyway, everything you see here is from downtown Wellington. This, I had such anxiety with shopping without my wife um, yesterday. So Anyway, but uh, I say that to say that I've met so many people in different stores downtown, um, and it always comes up, like, what do you do? Why are you here, you know, from, from the States, and the Southeast United States? And, you know, it, it opens up doors to share uh, what I'm doing. And 
uh, several individuals that I talked to at the shoe store or wherever were like, yeah, I just, um, I'm not into that, you know, church or, or whatever it is. So there are people all around us. I like to think of it as like, um, you know, if you, if you buy a used car or maybe even a new car or something like that, and you don't see that color of car anywhere or that brand of car, and then what happens when you drive it off the lot? You start to see them everywhere, right? It's not that they weren't there before. Uh, they've always been there, but you've got a heightened sense of, okay, now I own one of these. So it takes being intentional uh, and, and praying every day, looking around, looking up, looking out to cultivate relationships. Sometimes they're already there, but we can always strengthen those relationships. Uh, and then look forward to a time where you can share the gospel with them yourself or take them somewhere to hear the gospel. What's the, the number one place to hear the gospel, right? Church. Uh, or it could be an event like ours, you know, non-threatening, um, a lot of live music, free event, things like that. Um, about 85% of those who come to our events were brought by a friend. And so, again, we don't want to have just a Christian concert. And then the final thing is look after. Look after. And so, um, you know, Jesus says to go make disciples, not go and have a good time, not go and get decisions and all of these things, but to be making disciples. And so if we're going to do that, we know, we've got to know it's going to take uh, an investment. It's going to take time in order to uh, develop these relationships and, and nurture those relationships. And so um, that's really the key to all uh, that, that we do called I Mandarin. So I thought this morning, maybe if you know if you know someone in your life, maybe um, it's a relative, maybe it's someone across the breakfast table in the morning or someone at school or work and you know, they've been on your heart and your mind. If, if you want to write that name down, just take a minute to write that name down and we'll just pray over these. It could be more than one person. Now, gracious God, we um, thank you this morning um, for your word. And Lord, some here have written down the names of a loved one, maybe a father, a mother, a son, daughter, um, nephew, niece. Um, and Lord, maybe they, we, they've been praying for years, but Lord, today we just come together and pray for these individuals that you would help us to live a life uh, that's pleasing to you. And uh, Lord, that, uh, that our words would be, be seasoned with salt and that we, you would open a door uh, to be able to share the gospel with the Lord, open their hearts, and then, Lord, open our mouths. And, and um, Lord, we just lift these names up to you today. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Amen. So that's where you can start. Start being intentional and, um, and start praying and thinking about who you can invite to church. And so finally, the, the, the last part is, is look after, uh, to be making disciples. And we'll go through these fairly quickly. But... Um, what is it going to take? You know, there's some strategies from the life of Paul uh, as he dealt with those new believers in Christ. And the first one is Paul gave himself. Just as a nursing mother cares for her children, so we cared for you because we love you so much. We were delighted to share with you not only the gospel of God, but our lives as well. So this is kind of overarching principle, right? You have to invest your life. It's going to be tough. Um, you know, how many of you have children? How many of you were one once children? Yeah. You're still awake, yeah, okay. Um, you know, it wasn't over when you brought the baby home from the hospital, right? No? So, you know, it took months afterwards. And so, um, you know, you bring baby home from the hospital and it's a lot of investment. It's a lot of changing diapers and getting spit up on and getting up in the middle of the night and things like that. But was it worth it? Some of you said yeah, yeah, and some of you not, right? Um, and so, what's it going to take? You know, you might get a call from a friend at a bar at 1 a.m. Uh, they need a ride, or whatever it is. So we have to give ourselves. Paul also prayed for them. Very key. Uh, night and day, they pray. As we pray most earnestly, night and day that we may see you face to face and supply what is lacking in your faith. And so, uh, you know, the finish line is not going to be the, the, the day they come to Christ. It could be months down the road or years. Um, so Paul prayed for them. Paul sent others. He didn't leave it to chance. He sent Timothy and uh, Barnabas and a whole host of other people uh, to go on his behalf. He couldn't always be there. Um, Paul wrote letters. 
The reason I wrote to you is to see if you would stand the test of time. And so that's a great way to communicate with friends through texting and, and everything nowadays, emails and things. Um, and then also, finally, Paul returned personally. He said, sometime later, Paul said to Barnabas, let us go back and visit all the brothers in all the towns where we preach the word of the Lord and see how they are doing. And so we have to give ourselves. I heard a story about, um, this was way back before you know, technology and things, but it was a young couple that went to uh, college, university, and the, the gentleman graduated. They were in love, you know, had stars in their eyes. And he graduated a year earlier, so he got a job in another town. And uh, he really couldn't, you know, it was an entry-level job, new job. He couldn't get time off to go back. He couldn't afford the expensive phone calls and things like that. And, um, and so what he thought he would do would, was to write her a love letter each and every day. How many of you ever gotten a love letter? Yeah, yeah. Uh, he would write a love letter each and every day. And so every day that the postman would come down her street, walk up onto the, the porch and say, here you go, young lady. Here's that letter you've been waiting for. And every day that happened for a while. Well, you know what happened after a year? She married the postman, right? <laughs> There's just something about being there for that person, right? Uh, we have to give ourselves and, and know that it's going to take time and commitment. And so um, here in Wellington, we will be hosting some Christian Life and Witness Course locations. I think even one is here. Uh, we still have to set the date and time for that, but we would love for you to attend. And we look at um, setting apart Christ as Lord and focused on that first part. What have we got off God's pathway? Um, how do we get back on God's pathway? Because, again, you know, we all stumble, bumble, and fumble, but um, we need to be walking with Christ before we're going to be able to share. So we look at that. We look at, okay, how are some, what are some methods that we can use to share our faith? You know, how can we effectively communicate the gospel to someone? And so we'll provide different ways on that. And then finally, we'll look at, okay, how do we really disciple someone into true kingdom living and, and get them into the church? Um, and so that's the Christian Life and Witness course in preparation for uh, the God Loves You tour um, here. But uh, just for the sake of time and everything, um, I don't know what we have next, Pastor, but uh, yeah. Yeah, oh, great, great. But <laughs> no, um, I just really, it's an honor to, to be here again. And um, just what a phenomenal church. And so thank you so much. And I'm going to turn it over to Pastor Hamish. Thank you. So you can see that, you know, there'll be more information um, over the coming weeks around the preparation for this, uh, around the Christian Life and Witness. We will be holding a, a night here. And it includes a free dinner. Ooh. Can't be better than that. Glenn's already sitting there. Give me the date. So sorry, I think I don't have to cook that night. But the whole purpose is this is a this is this is really to bring together everything we've been looking at and everything we've been praying about, everything we've been talking about since COVID hit. In the midst of the darkness of people's lives, in the midst of, of everything that's happening, where we've talked about being hope carriers, that we believe we'd be called to be a, a, a community of hope for our city and beyond. This is a chance for us to bring it all together and for hope to be released. And I really want to encourage you to think about the name that you wrote down. If you didn't write down a name, start praying and saying, God, give me a name. And he will, because these people matter more to him than they matter to you. The person that you love more than anything else, God loves even more. And so much so that the Bible says that he gave his only son for that person. If he was willing to do that, how much more should we be willing to do all that we can to, to reach out and, and just leverage that relationship for eternity's sake? You, you know, some of you, as, as Chris said, may not feel comfortable and confident sharing the gospel. You just have to share your faith. Hey, this is why I'm a Christian. This is the difference it's made. And those times when you felt overwhelmed, I've been overwhelmed, but my hope isn't in my circumstances. It's in the fact that there is a God who loves me. And I don't understand how it's going to look, but he's going to work it all out for good. And one day, when it's all over, I'm going to be in heaven for eternity. And, and, and just have those conversations. We're going to teach you how to do those conversations, how to walk with people, so that... Your heart will overflow with the, with the joy that, that nothing can come close to of leading people to faith, of seeing people you love and care for come to faith. Trust me, as much as I, I, I love 
my wife, and as much as I delight in seeing her, there's no greater joy than seeing people come to faith, knowing that their eternal destiny has been sealed. So I encourage you, make the most of this opportunity. Start praying for um, November the 16th. Uh, plan on being there. Plan on bringing people that come alive. It's going to be a fantastic time for the Church of Jesus Christ here in Wellington and, and in the nation of New Zealand. So Thank you so much, Chris, for that message. It was very encouraging and inspiring. Um, we just thank you. And I, I think for all of us, we can learn from that and be excited yeah. as we go into all that's ahead. Yeah, it's so good. Um, you know, I'm looking forward to us. We have one more week, I believe, of Missions Month left. So um, it's going to be so good. So we do encourage you to tune in again next Sunday so that, um, you know, we are already blessed this Sunday by Christmas. And we have Josh Redding coming next Sunday. So it's going to be great. Uh, what a blessing this month has been for all of us. I'm sure all of you have taken something away from it. But um, I'm just going to pray and then we can wrap up today's service. Sure. Dear Lord, we thank you for um, what a Sunday it's been, Lord Jesus. For those watching online and for those attending in person as well. We thank you that um, you know we have been able to hear from different people, hear different perspectives and see what's been going on in other places, um, Lord, in this nation and beyond. So we're so grateful that we get to be part of this. Um, we pray that throughout this month, as we've been hearing these sermons, that, Lord, you put a passion and a fire in us to go out into our mission field and to do the good work, Lord. So, Father, as we go about the rest of our weeks, we submit and surrender everything to you, and we ask that you have your way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, it's great that you can join us. Have an incredible week, and we look forward to seeing you very soon.